Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this new webinar uh, on process automation projects methodologies, and especially we are want to dedicate our webinar today about the building of a center of excellence. And today we are going to dive into something specific, which is the center of excellence. And I am very happy today again to be with you, Kai. Um, I want to introduce Kai first, uh, quickly. Kai is a director at NSI Solutions in Panama and vice president of the services chapter at ADPMP. Hello, Kai. Hi there. It's a pleasure to be here with you together again. Yeah, again. And that's great because we are really going to dive into this uh, center of excellence concept and not only uh, talking about theory, but we are going to share your own experience on that um, and talk about more practical ways to implement it. So, my first question for you, Kai. Why do you create a center of excellence? What are really the reasons why you want to create it? I'm not pretending that uh, whatever I'm going to say uh, is the only and the official and the unique uh, uh, applicable definition of a center of excellence in the context uh, of of PPM. Uh, but from from what I from what what we we have uh, gathered and and experienced in the in the past, it's basically something very simple. It's just um, a department or a group of people within uh, a framework, uh, a corporate framework making sure that uh, the the processes are actually first of all end to end so that's one one of the most important criteria to define a business uh, including all the aspects of the value chain so it's end to end and uh, that we have visibility as a second uh, premise of uh, what the center center of excellence uh, has to look for so that we have insights of what happens within those processes and how the actors and components connect. So what kind of output from a given uh, activity has on another activity and as, a, uh, as, a, as a sequence of events, uh, hence uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, concept. And then uh, as an additional point, uh, looking for optimizing the whole thing continuously. So that is on, on very basic terms from a very high level perspective what a center of excellence could be for, for processes and, and process management specifically. So making sure that we have those insights and enough insights to take decisions. Of course there are a lot of ramifications in uh, 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 within and part of what we try to explain also during this um, webinar. So on, on, on one side you see the slides and I'm trying to complement that also with our insights. So uh, also on very basic uh, uh, terms, uh, why we should do it is uh, to make things better and, and make things better faster and cheaper. So uh, the, the core the core of uh, this cycle and the keyword is cyclical cyclical management is that we want to not only have a one-time shot, a one-time implementation of an automation where we go in and say, well, you know what, I have a process, I put that into place, user technology, robotics, BPM, and start automating, finish automating, leave it at this, and, and have a black box in production for a couple of months or a year, and nobody looks at it. So that's maybe the complete, uh, complete opposite of uh, what BPM tries to achieve. BPM, uh, in, 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 in essence, make more like a, a methodology wants to achieve uh, in a continuous improvement. That's why you also see in, in the slide uh, that been shows here a circle. So it's supposed to be cyclical. It's, it's supposed to be ongoing continuously. And, and that's the main differentiator between if you look at an application, a simple workflow, and what PPM is. And with that in mind, uh, you, of course, have the challenge uh, of if it's supposed to be uh, adapted and uh, improved upon continuously, so how, how are we going to achieve that, uh, what, what that means? And, and that is basically yeah, what's uh, intrinsical about uh, a center of excellence, yeah, the ramifications therein. So if you want to make uh, things better, faster, cheaper in terms of improvements and improving our, our, our process, then um, the, the center of excellence uh, provides those insights, uh, the feedbacks, and, and basically the alignments to different industry standards. 
So with that in mind, yeah, one of the ma ma major challenges of why we should do that in the first place is what we uh, worldwide live currently through. The, the, the COVID-19 pandemic yeah, has an impact, yeah, bigger or smaller, most, most of the times bigger <laughs> yeah, for every, uh, everybody. But there's a silver lining, right? Yeah, yeah, at least from, from the perspective uh, of process automation. Many uh, bureaucracy, bureaucracies or things that are manual, yeah, the um, attachment to paper, yeah, those are all things that yeah, I do think as a, as a result of what we do yeah, and, and live through is, is fading away, right? Um, people need to get yeah, on the digital transformation train yeah, by obligation. There's no other alternative. And BPM yeah, can help. That also means we need to adapt our processes, digitize our processes, wherever we have like yeah, physical signatures, yeah, paper trails in the processes, yeah, all those things can be now yeah, optimized, yeah, automated yeah, to a certain extent. And there, I think BPM can help. And those are the kinds of challenges um, the Center of Excellence uh, tries to address in optimizing the processes. Yeah, so recognizing what is required in the market away from brick and mortar uh, towards uh, digitized uh, branches, towards uh, automated processes, uh, away from the physical paper trail uh, over to a digitized uh, blockchain, maybe driven uh, process behind the scenes, kind of making use of the technologies and incorporate that effectively into our uh, iterative process enhancements. So with that, yeah, you see four blocks, right? We have the uh, unifications or, or the linkage between the directions, operations. Uh, we have uh, technology, of course, uh, and, and business control. Uh, technologies, uh, we try to highlight in another color, uh, or technology itself uh, in another color that uh, is, is an intrins uh, intrinsic or uh, an inseparable part of uh, the center of excellence uh, always. So technology cannot be uh, minimized away. It, it, it has to be a part of what uh, we look at. We use technology, but of course we can also, uh, we cannot forget about uh, the linkage to uh, the business side of things, uh, operation and, and the overall vision uh, of the company. So the, uh, the upper management uh, basically goes back to uh, the old, SWOT an, uh, uh, analysis, where you look at uh, what are my strengths, weaknesses, opportunities in the market, the overall arcing uh, strategy of the business, and kind of uh, bring that back into um, my processes and translate that with technologies in order to address things I can do on the business side and on the operational side. So that is basically the, the umbrella of a center of excellence. Within, of course, uh, we can make use of standards. So I spoke briefly about standards. Yeah, and why the center of excellence is, it's a, it's a perfect way to introduce those standards into our operations. So we have, for example, the CBOC, uh, the Common Body of Knowledge of uh, the Association of Business Process Management Professionals. It's called the ABPMP. Yeah, so there's a framework we can make use of uh, in terms of uh, what kind of uh, standards uh, and measurements to put forth, how to um, describe a process as is, the new process to be, how to communicate those changes to our stakeholders. We can make use of uh, the OMG, not the oh my god, but uh, the object management group uh, kind of standards uh, where we go in and, and, and leverage things like the BPMN 2.0, but also other things like uh, the uh, new decision model and notations, the, the, the DMN model, uh, the object management group uh, uh, has brought forth. Uh, so there, there are things, uh, there for the taking, yeah, they don't require an investment. It's just a matter of it kind of applying those frameworks to our day-by-day -day operations, and that is where uh, the center of excellence comes into play. Same goes with the APQC, uh, the American uh, Process Quality Center, with their process classification framework, the PCF, yeah, which is a great choice to start categorizing processes, bringing them in, into order, standardize uh, what, what we are doing, and not necessarily um, improvising and reinventing the wheel from scratch just because we start automating processes or other things like the unified modeling language. So there, there are different key components the center of excellence can leverage in order to kind of link uh, the circle you see with the business control, uh, the vision, the, the general management, uh, operations and technology. So simplified, but yeah. basically that it's what it's, what it's about. Yeah, of course. And 
that kind of toolkit and <laughs> you mix everything. So uh, what are the benefits for, for that? Uh, I mean, okay, that's great. We have lots of things to be implemented, but what are the benefits the company can see and the people can see as well? Yeah. And it kind of bridges over from what I said before. So uh, we want to make things um, uh, cheaper, faster, better. Uh, so uh, and that doesn't go away. Uh, uh, also looking at the benefits. Uh, so overall, um, the uh, activity or the methodology, the framework, uh, process framework uh, is is an economic exercise, right? So what we want to do is uh, we want to optimize uh, uh, the overall profits, yeah, right, and and do that continuously. So, and those are also the major benefits we uh, that derive uh, and are the result of the center of excellence. Specifically, uh, more specifically, so what we want to look at is uh, um, spot changes. So we want to make sure that, uh, first of all, when I mentioned, for example, the, the, the COVID crisis or things even before, uh, when we looked at um, um, maybe enhancing our, our uh, time to yes, our time to market, uh, uh, time frame uh, and uh, um, divergence if we uh, maybe have uh, one or two standard deviations between uh, where we want to be and where we currently are. Those are things we have to recognize and see where the market is heading at um, in terms of response times, quality, quantities, but also uh, uh, take advantage of the long tail. So one of the things uh, that uh, when we talk about automation often uh, overlooked is uh, is one of the major, um, if you look at, uh, for example, Amazon, or if you look at Netflix, uh, one of the uh, major uh, attractive components uh, through technology uh, uh, those companies brought to the table is uh, uh, enabling uh, the long tail, uh, the diversity of things uh, in an effective manner and be more attractive for people to choose their specific niches, their specific needs, uh, within those platforms, and BPM can do something very similar. So why why we standardize? That's what we uh, can see here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So uh, what? Uh, why we standardize? Maybe uh, the eighty twenty rule, right? So the twenty percent of the processes that generate eighty percent of the volume, it it allows us, it affords us with the freedom to recognize and to spot also uh, those deltas, uh, which doesn't necessarily fit into uh, a, a complete automation. So yeah, automation is not necessary. Uh, SOC and, and the center of excellence is not necessary. Yeah, designed in a way that we get rid of human beings, right, or uh, individuality, or, or or things that are different, but kind of uh, allow for the freedom in order to strategize around those things. And that's what I mean with uh, spotting those opportunities in the market and adapt uh, our processes to it. Uh, to get there, of course, we need a, a bunch of things. We need uh, automation. We need a uh, what we are going to discuss later on is things like yeah, business intelligence, artificial intelligence, but they're all there. So the good news is with Bonita Soft, for example, and, and, and yeah, methodologies in BPM, they're already there in just uh, maybe a matter of organizing like a puzzle, uh, yeah, the entire picture together and, and take advantage of that. And that's the job of the yeah, center of excellence and one of the major benefits within that is what we see uh, basically on on the screen. So the typical uh, typical benefits are we integrate different departments. We we, we allow for better communication flow, uh, eliminating uh, silos, uh, communication silos, data silos. Um, do things faster. So if we have uh, and and that's uh, one of the things I mentioned before. The PCF, the Process Qualification Framework, in their suggested KPIs a measure is how much time from the conception uh, of an idea until you go to the market actually uh, uh, transpires. And, and if you are within uh, acceptable or competitive benchmarks. So that is something uh, we look also uh, in, uh, at, uh, with, uh, within the center of excellence. So we, we establish process KPIs, business KPIs, but also more importantly, system KPIs. Often something uh, easily uh, overlooked when we speak about eff uh, efficiency and effectiveness. Technology is an, in, is an important part uh, of the management when it comes to process portfolio management. Uh, we have to make sure that whatever architecture we come up with, uh, we have a framework that supports us so that we don't necessarily come up with very interactive processes and, and user uh, end-user uh, front-ends and forms where, uh, for example, if I type in 
yeah, a couple of queries yeah, yeah, in an elastic search fashion it auto populates the rest of the form fields that uh, doing so doesn't kill the speed and scalability of our applications specifically thinking that we extend the processes to a, a mobile market in a way that uh, we want to be uh, forthcoming we want to be proactive our forms should be uh, very adaptive uh, but they have to be fast so uh, that is another kpi systems kpi we have to continuously measure and that is one of the benefits of uh, a center of excellence to make sure that you have the peace of mind that somebody is looking at those uh, uh, sets of data making sure that uh, even while we are having maybe uh, 500,000 a million of inquiries a day uh, our system holds up scales and our processes are still agile so mm. yeah yeah, that's, yeah. What it, that's why yeah. if I jump into into it I can see that you are already talking about challenges and that's I think something that is really important for a company and here you were talking about different challenges uh, technological uh, efficiency quality and so on uh, if we talk uh, on a pragmatic way what is the 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 challenge the main change uh, a company can expect with the center of excellence i mean is yeah. it a human challenge is it, it is uh, linked to the technology i don't know yeah it's uh, multifold right uh, so you have uh, uh, as with everything else you have a lot of challenges uh, along the way uh, we have to uh, figure out uh, what is the best way uh, to to approach this so one one of the challenges um, uh, or, or one of the uh, most effective ways to overcome most of the challenges i would say is, is sticking to a proven and applied methodology so when we spoke about defining kpis uh, um, from the question before the benefits uh, development methodology so either it's uh, if this is going to be agile or uh, if you're going to use uh, a standard waterfall model uh, for the implementation having those ironed out um, and adapted to uh, your company right yeah, because different companies do have different standards do have different uh, ways of implementing technologies and solutions but sticking to that and 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 having a framework around those helps a lot right and that also goes down to to the level of uh, making sure that you have uh, testing uh, testing methods uh, using things like regression testing yeah uh, with selenium g meter rpa in order to uh, make sure that your processes hold up is part of a, um, a methodology framework you can uh, you can use in order to minimize the challenges. So the challenges themselves, if you look at from the from the angle of uh, what to do in, in practical terms to generate a, a center of excellence in the first place, yeah, you have to decide upon uh, things like if you want to do and create a centralized or a decentralized uh, center of excellence. So making sure that you have only one. A center that responds uh, to all the uh, the process needs of a company or if you create like uh, sub centers with their own challenges so depending on that decision you will have a um, uh, communication challenges for for instance so if you go a, a decentralized route for example creating if uh, we see that often in uh, for banking implementation if you have a bank where you implement uh, and automate processes for customer allocation right uh, or selling consumer loans uh, personal loans, mortgages, credit cards and so forth yeah, and stick to one center that focuses exclusively on the commercial aspects of those processes. You have to make sure that there's also another center that, that looks at the post, uh, post sales, the post commercial efforts. What happens once it is your customer? How do you tend to the customer yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in collections? Do you have collection challenges? So is there something that yeah, it bleeds over as a deficiency from the first process to the back office processes and make sure that there's a second center and that those both centers talk to each other so communication challenge depending on how you how you design uh, your center of excellency uh, uh, centralized or decentralized is one of the major points yeah mm -hmm. from from practical uh, experiences yeah my suggestion would be always going with uh, centralized uh, centers of excellence yeah you, right. you had a question yeah Hmm. Yeah, no, no, I was thinking about an example when we, you were talking about banking. Uh, there is a, a group in France called Crédit Agricole. 
uh, which is working with, with which is working with Bonita in different uh, regions and subsidiaries. And uh, actually, they really noticed that they have the same kind of processes and that they could homogenize everything and make sure they would be more efficient, uh, optimize everything. And they are starting this. I think they are starting to have this kind of um, of um, method and they want to implement the center of excellence. But the fact is that they don't know if they have to centralize everything, but they know that they have to work on methodologies, on norms used to build the processes, to run them on the same tools, but not, not only that, the languages used by the developers to develop the interfaces, for example, and, and they see that also they have to sometimes work on their organization, their own organization, to make sure that everything is consistent to, to be able to reuse uh, and be efficient uh, among the group. And that's really interesting what you say, because for the time being, they have not decided yet, because they don't know if they have to uh, centralize everything or leave uh, freedom at um, to every every region to do what they want and just homogenize what is common so yeah that's an example yeah and that's a good example uh, so in real life that happens uh, and i know it's easier said than done if i say like uh, go centralized all the way if you have a very big and a uh, very diversified organization that may that may be a challenge in itself um so if you have to start uh, my only suggestion with it would be if you have to start in a decentralized fashion, make sure that there are, that there are, are uh, communication channels and there's a structure in place that those different islands uh, end up talking and that there's a plan in place uh, long term that they become centralized. Because uh, in my mind, that's what uh, we always argue about uh, being the centralized decentralization. So while your organization is completely decentralized, goes through only channels uh, or all blend of different channels uh, attending, to the customer through the customer journey map and, and everything yeah, you need to be flexible to operate perfectly decentralized and still comply with all the policies in place and that second portion comes back that there's a, a centralized repository and hopefully even a center of excellence somewhere that makes sure to to to, to connect the dots and uh, uh, to enforce the overarching policies right mm -hmm. other changes there are, about, yeah, yeah yeah sorry yeah, Sorry, there's still a couple of uh, very important other challenges. So that's yeah. maybe the base challenge of how you structure it. Uh, below that, okay. we have uh, things, very basic things. Uh, lack of empowerment uh, happens uh, all too often where you end up creating uh, some department or you uh, announce and, and, and kind of designate somebody. You're going to be uh, our process officer, uh, but not necessarily uh, yeah, allowing and affording uh, this individual or this department uh, to become uh, independent in a way to suggest changes, uh, enforce changes, uh, and communicate that effectively. So, with a lack of empowerment, it's also uh, almost of the al almost all of the times a mute point to to start with from the get go. Uh, so that's crucial to make sure that uh, whatever uh, hierarchy and and whatever structure uh, uh, command structure you have in place uh, for your company that yeah, it's uh, on a level where decision can, can be taken, uh, communication can be driven, uh, yeah, and, 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 and basically uh, also uh, changes can be enforced. Otherwise, it, it won't happen. Lack of funds, that's another very basic issue where we say, yeah, yeah, it's very important. We have somebody, uh, Kai is going to be uh, the, prof, uh, the, the, the process officer in charge, but uh, we don't have any uh, funds, internal uh, fund allocation in order to do our job. For example, looking at the KPIs. All those things uh, require technologies, licenses, training, yeah, communication, maybe a full-time job. So yeah, funding is, is crucial as well. Sounds like common sense. All too often, it's omitted. Lack of uh, mission-critical processes. That happens also at the very beginning. So, uh, and, and there will be a couple of other questions we discuss later where we uh, think about when would be an opportune time to, to start with the center of excellence. And one of the things yeah, that is also negative is if you start overly complicated, overly yeah, sudden or too soon, yeah, meaning that yeah, not having enough processes, enough data, and actually to uh, enact upon something or to get statistical reasonable uh, results where you end up having maybe 
two or three months of data, um, that's not necessarily something where you can say, well, there's a pattern or it's, it's statistically significant enough in order to say, well, uh, this aligns or uh, maybe diverges from uh, the overall strategy of the company. So uh, timing is also very important that we have enough uh, critical mass in terms of information and processes in place where we can start. Um, and the other one is uh, lack of ownership and incorrect uh, allocation. Uh, so if you put the center of excellence below some department, uh, often there's a tendency to put that somewhere hidden away uh, the IT department, right? Uh, there, there, there are a couple of, uh, a couple, uh, a couple of process people uh, taking care of our processes and process needs. So that is something uh, to avoid as well. A lack of ownership where uh, it's overly, uh, it's, it's like a matrix for everything. So uh, it has to be a good combination between a, a matrix organization, but still uh, a command, uh, a chain of command yeah, where actually you can uh, end up deciding because otherwise it's overly democratic and everybody has an opinion and we uh, ping-ponging uh, uh, our, our way forth without actually doing anything. So mm -hmm. those are, from what I saw, the most important challenges to be aware. Yeah, that's what we can see here, I guess. The kind of uh, evolution in the organization structure uh, of the center of excellence uh, where you have different kind of uh, roles and people. I don't know if uh, if uh, you want to comment that or it's more or less the same kind of of, um, of side here showing the this transversality um, but also the, the need for executive level as well. Yeah, uh, on the previous slide, if you go back one, please. Yeah. Um, yeah, here the main point is not necessary um, how to embed uh, in in your departments uh, the center of excellence, but uh, to differentiate between what we discussed at the very beginning between uh, process execution and project execution. So uh, one of the challenges uh, is uh, understanding that the role of the center of excellence uh, usually is not the implementation of new processes. So if you say, hey, we're going to purchase a new BBM platform, let's buy Bonita soft. So we are going to use and implement Bonita soft, for example. Uh, it's a project. I mean, uh, you have a fund allocation, you have a specific mission, maybe you implement it with a process, maybe without a process. So it's a very limited in time, right? A limited thing to do. And usually uh, you do need a direction, process uh, wise speaking. So uh, like input of what we have to comply with KPI, uh, KPI wise. So if uh, we implement the platform with initial process, uh, what kind of uh, as is to be uh, KPIs we went uh, we we end up with uh, things like um, yeah the time yeah for an approval uh, before automation is eight hours we want to reduce that to five minutes because we are going to embed uh, a business rules engine or uh, yeah right now everything has to be uh, documented automatically so that our all the screens at uh, the process flow yeah is going to be automatically automatically uh, um, documented and updated and kept up to date. So those are the the things that um, yeah, the project carries. But there is a life after the project and that is where the center of excellence goes and takes over. So mixing those two things is usually unhealthy, meaning that uh, if you say, well, I have my process guys, left, uh, let them have uh, the ownership and let uh, them be the executor of uh, the the, the projects and that's actually not their role right their role is uh, to be the custodians uh, and and be vigilant about the kpis suggest and improve uh, new improvements and enhancements and not necessarily executing that therefore you already have your pmo uh, your 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 project department and that's not going to change with uh, a process department right okay that's the idea of the slide to differentiate between those two responsibilities. PMO and center of excellence. Exactly. Okay, before we move on, because I think we already learned a lot of things, I would like to know if you are in the room, <laughs> in the room, if you already implemented a center of excellence, because then we are going to talk about um, successes and difficulties as well. And so do you have an example of success, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, 
before that, yeah, let me cover quickly yeah, stepping stones in order to set up yeah. a, a center of excellence. So yeah, we spoke a bit yeah, about the challenges, yeah, lack of funding, ownership, yeah, the, the yeah, non-existent differentiation between process and project, yeah, what you just showed in the in the last slide. Yeah. So yeah, one of the or, or a couple of stepping stones, yeah, major stepping stones for the creation is yeah, making sure first of all the handover occurs so that uh, whenever there's a project that's concluded, it's being probably handed over to uh, the center of excellence so that they can basically hold the ownership, communicate, follow up on pending items uh, that in each project usually there are, uh, then that we have a clear mission. So the boring SWOT uh, analysis uh, I'm, I, I was speaking about at the very beginning, where we speak about, yeah, where are my strengths, weaknesses, and so forth, yeah, making the effort of yeah, tangibilizing that or, or, or putting a number behind it so that there's a numeric value we can actually measure. So if we say that my strength is in yeah, maybe response times, what that actually means and derive from there, yeah, what is the goal we have to maintain? So if my competitive advantage is giving an answer to the customer during an onboarding process, to give an answer within two hours, yeah, working hours Monday to Friday and my threshold yeah, for process to be automated and 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 we being vigilant about yeah, is that we are never exceeding uh, uh, 1.75 so one hour and uh, 45 minutes yeah that this is something I measure that is what I refer to making sure that we are clear on the process level what the vision translates to when we put this vision into into a process so doing that job or doing the work, the effort, um, and translating all of that into measurable uh, uh, brackets and, and kind of put those brackets into the processes and measuring those. So that's the second thing, yeah, knowing where uh, we had with the vision from uh, Elias on. So basically, yeah, we talked about IT and not necessarily ending up that the department, the center of excellence itself, ends up as a sub-department somewhere in IT. Yeah, in the basement, but yeah, also not going the other extreme and excluding IT altogether. So it's more mixed, right? It's so that we have at least one representative from the business side and operation side, and another representative from the technology side, because yeah, BPM as a, method, as a methodology is at least fifty percent yeah, technology. So and that's yeah also a sign of our times, right? So basically, if you look at any advancements yeah, in, 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 in corporate innovations, uh, competitive advantages, almost all of them have to do with technology. So we cannot eliminate the, the concept of technology by any means, away from the framework, yeah, away from the center of excellence. So why we don't want uh, to th this be uh, uh, ending up uh, to be a sole department of IT, yeah, we do have to make sure IT is represented and it's part of the center of excellence. Yeah, um, and empowerment, budget. Yeah, so those are the, the stepping stones uh, out of that. So examples, success and failure, yes. Good question. And the most present uh, I always have and, 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 and am allowed to talk about is uh, HSBC. So HSBC, we automated uh, uh, for several years uh, in Panama and the region. Yeah, um, with different processes in corporate banking, uh, consumer banking, retail banking, and there, yeah, um, yeah. basically before we ended up having something uh, that approximates the center of excellence was yeah, everything was improvised um, and not necessarily in a in a in a conscious way. Yeah. The way we implemented our uh, process automations yeah, was basically that yeah, the return of investment, the business case. Yeah, derived exclusively from the department in need. So we started automating credit card allocation. So there was a credit card department saying, hey, we want to automate our processes around credit cards, meaning integration with the credit bureaus, a rules engine where we can have a decision matrix of who's automatically approved or, or rejected, yeah, and all those things, right? Yeah, automated generations of the contracts, all of that, and integrate that to the core banking system and to the different credit bureaus. So yeah, we did that first with the island, quote unquote, of credit cards. Then, and see my parallel, uh, without having finished uh, credit cards, a personal loan department approached us and saying, hey, 
we need to do the same. Let's start and automate our personal loans. So we created a different uh, a project team with a different budget and automated this. And we ended up with uh, very effective processes on their own, but very ineffective as a company. Because what's, uh, what ended up happening is uh, that the ones who used uh, those processes we automated were the customer and the officer. And they didn't separate between credit cards, personal loans, or anything. They they saw the entire portfolio and then ended up having a process and forms that look completely different for credit cards than they did for mortgages, for personal loans. So we created a new world for each business um, a, a section. Yeah, and that, of course, was not sustainable or, or effective. So what the uh, uh, bank uh, ended up doing uh, with us together is we created a very small team, a very small department. Uh, it was actually only two people, uh, one liaison officer with enough uh, 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 empowerment uh, to take decisions from IT and one representative from the business side. And they together had the challenge or the, the mission in our, uh, of unifying forms, variables, reports, integration, so very technical things, but also on the customer journey side of things, unify uh, the CSS, the, the, the cascade style sheeting, the look and feel, the, uh, the branding. So if we call uh, um, customer name, customer ID, last name, in that order for one process, this is the structure to follow for all the other processes. And for each enhancement, for each improvement of a process to create a business case, making sure that uh, before doing anything, to a process that is already in production to give it a, a commercial structure to say what is the return of investment, what is the business needs, and how actually the technology is going to solve that, and then incorporate the provider in order to automate things and, and, and develop things. And that worked very well. So it was not overly complex, and it was a night and day difference before and after we implemented it. So it was a good example. Yeah, that's a great example. I have more or less the opposite example. Uh, you were talking about a, pro, um, a provider. Uh, I've been working for a <clears throat> consulting company that were helping a famous uh, ski resort, uh, ski producer in Europe and especially in France. I can't name it, but I guess most of you will uh, recognize it. Um, they had lots of uh, subsidiaries, okay? And they wanted to, uh, of course, um, optimize everything and mutualize everything because they wanted to save money, to be more efficient, to make sure they would be, um, to get the t uh, time to market for all the product lines because each subsidiary was working for one product line, more or less. And the fact that they asked um, a consulting company to help them implementing this kind of center of excellence. So they started with the first process and then with the second one, and then they wanted to make sure that all subsidiaries would um, use the same organization, same processes, because the production uh, process was more or less the same, but different product lines, but okay. The fact is that uh, it w it had been sponsored by the IT team, okay? And nobody internally uh, at the direct direction level, the top management level, was really convinced about that. And as in this company, each subsidiary had a very uh, powerful top management, the fact that IT and a consulting company was pushing for that and that nobody internally took it uh, for its own project, it didn't work. Uh, it didn't work because we implemented everything. Uh, we trained the people, the users and so on. But finally, after six months, they went back to their uh, Excel sheets on one hand, the old uh, ERP on the other hand, and it doesn't work. So uh, what I learned from that is that you can do whatever you want as a consultant, as a, a provider. If nobody internally is already convinced and is a real sponsor, it won't work because you have to, to make sure that this project will be internal and that then the center of excellence will be core for the company. 
that's something I guess we are going to see in the, in the last questions. As we are uh, a bit short uh, on time, I suggest that we go on, move on to the next uh, question about the technologies and BPM technologies that can help um, the management of a CO. Very good. And also, uh, important point. Uh, so, what you mentioned has uh, a lot of do uh, a lot to do with uh, pro, um, with company culture. Yeah. So, corporate culture uh, influences yes uh, the success or failure of yeah, a center of excellence greatly. So, the um, if the culture is not there yeah, to support, to be receptive for something like yeah, an input, we, we can basically measure until we drop that and, and, and communicate and report. Yeah. There has to be a, a structure that receives yeah, those suggestions, those measures, those reports, yeah, and they actually is uh, willing to do something about that. Yeah. And, and you're right, that's usually a, a top-down a top down a challenge to make sure that upper management is convinced and once upper management is convinced it flows down it never goes from my experience neither yeah, the other way around so you can have a highly motivated team if yeah, the cxx and the management fear is not convinced it doesn't help so in terms of technologies yeah given that we have yeah, the sponsorship yeah, we have yeah, people that are convinced and the culture is is yeah yeah yeah, proactive towards uh, something like a center of excellence, then uh, we can make use of uh, technologies like in Bonita Soft. Uh, there's a bunch of things we can use. Usually, we have something like a BAM, uh, a business administration monitoring. So, very simple dashboards uh, where we can look into the uh, process side of things and look where we are with bottlenecks, workloads, response times, distribution. So, if you have a logic of round robin, a round robin uh, uh, allocation of, of workloads. To see if that is balanced, yeah. And if you look and combine what I uh, discussed at the very beginning, if you applied something like BPMN uh, 2.0 and have a, a diagram uh, that uh, that affords us with the granularity of uh, assigning the workloads depending on uh, the, uh, the the current workload, but also on the responsibilities of uh, the process owners. Saying that, for example, Kai can approve uh, anything. Uh, between Kai and Delphin can approve anything between uh, zero and ten thousand uh, dollars, but only uh, Delphin can uh, approve something that goes over those uh, ten thousand dollars, so ten thousand and one dollar uh, and and, uh, and uh, more. Uh, then this is something we can then start to measure in an intelligent matter, uh, manner with something like a BAM, a business uh, administration monitoring within BPM. So that's the very first thing. From there forward, we have the standard reporting tools. Usually, BPM doesn't provide a data cube, so you don't end up uh, having a business intelligence or, or, or projections, pattern recognition uh, uh, natively uh, as part of the BPM package. You usually uh, should make sure that you have uh, a tabular, organized accumulation of all the process data and business data so that uh, later on you can throw some BI tools against that, something like uh, yeah, Power BI, Tableau, or other tools, SAS. And then, of course, you can venture into the fields of uh, data science with uh, process mining. There are a lot of uh, very interesting examples where you can, uh, and, and uh, Monitasoft has, has modules for that, where you can uh, explore uh, the deltas, right? So you use a set of data of the process, but you follow the transaction even after the process in all the other systems and make sure hey, are we actually aligned to our overarching end-to-end -end process I mentioned at the very beginning or not? That is something the Center of Excellence can use technology-wise. So data science, specifically process mining, but all the other fields of data mining as well, looking for, hunting for um, correlations, hunting for uh, patterns, uh, outliers, uh, uh, groups, clusters, um, and all, the, uh, all those fun things. And I'm sorry, but that might look um, simple, but you can use documentation as well. For example, if I take the example of Bonita, we have documentation generation, which will generate automatically the, the documentation from of your processes with all the components, which is helpful as well. You want to make sure that you can measure the efficiency of your process and make changes. And uh, I guess that's what I saw in my previous um, 
in my past uh, as consultants. Documenting things is very important as well because you need traceability in order to make sure from when you are to go to where you want to share with people to collab collaborate. If you summarize, yeah. So what you want to avoid is, of course, only free uh, infrequently. So every once in a while, you you create a diagram, uh, some documentation, or never. If you uh, uh, summarize both of those, usually you end up uh, at around 50 or more percent. And here it is about the same. So everybody who is actually keeping up uh, with the process documentation and updating uh, uh, the updates to the processes uh, on the documentation level as well, uh, congratulations, because that is uh, exactly what you have to do. And what Delphi mentioned, it's, uh, it's, it's a foundation in order to go forward, because if you don't know your your own processes and keep them up to date, uh, uh, audit wise, documentation wise, then it's very hard to to improve. Because uh, what you mentioned before, like where you want to go, uh, needs to establish where you currently are at. And if you don't have that, um, you're just guessing, right? And and it's crucial to have that documentation. And it's an easy thing to do, right, with the right technology. Okay, I can see that we are almost out of time, so I will jump to the last question. Because it's important. This question is really important, and then we are going to take all the questions. Don't worry. So, Guy, what do you recommend finally to implement the CEO uh, internally or with the help of a service provider? Because one of your functions is uh, being director of a service provider as well. Exactly, and there's the answer. So, uh, the best way, the best way to establish a center of excellence is hire. Yeah, NSI and Kai Winkler. No, just kidding. So <laughs> the answer is, of course, if you can, if you can, yeah, the best way to do is yeah, to have the center of excellence yeah, internally. So that yeah, this is an internal department that you don't want to outsource because the idea, the whole, there's a whole concept behind yeah, the process management. It's called enterprise process management, where you end up defining your entire value chain, as I mentioned, the end-to-end -end process and also uh, your company, what the company is doing, the reason of being in terms of processes. And if you do that, you don't want to outsource your core of your business, meaning the process management. So that's why it's it's best to keep that as a core uh, integral part of your company internally. That doesn't mean that you cannot uh, reach out uh, to to consultancy companies uh, that can help you with establishing uh, the the uh, the center of excellence uh, to do audits uh, every once in a while, maybe every uh, quarter to check if you're on track and, and uh, up to date with the latest and greatest in terms of technologies and, and frameworks and methodologies, but you don't want to give away the control because then uh, what Delphine suffered in her example will happen. Yeah, there's no ownership yeah, yeah, and, and there's also no commitment, so internal. Okay, thank you, Kai. I guess we are going to leave some time for questions, and I see that we already have questions here. Um, do you recommend to use a platform to allow all stakeholders to communicate and share experience and assets? Uh, for example, uh, some RPA vendors propose one or there are other options which are brand agnostic. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. So uh, it's a very good uh, option, and the answer is yes. But, however, um, I wouldn't make that a prerequisite. So um, while it helps a lot, and it's uh, far better than uh, a file server, right? Yeah, it shouldn't be your showstopper to start. So yeah, that's the first thing. Um, you don't necessarily need specific software to to start and, and, and establish the first couple of things. But if you have a knowledge management software where we uh, can share lessons, uh, documents, versioning, then by all means, uh, that will help a lot. The The other thing I want to mention is um, it doesn't have to be necessarily the most expensive option, right? Yeah, because those are very basic things, important things, yeah, and not to diminish the importance of an ERP. And depending on how the price is structured, yeah, yeah, it may be already covered by what you pay. But to pay yeah, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars just for that would be my recommendation, right? As long as you have some kind of wiki approach yeah, with a file server behind the scenes, and even something as simple like a SharePoint yeah, or an ECM, the basic ECM will help. But yes, definitely take advantage of technology. 
for that, for the knowledge management? Good question. Oh, okay. Yeah, very good question. Another good question, I think, because it's related to another concept. What role can case management play in a center of excellence approach to BPA? Mm -hmm. That's interesting as well, because it's a different approach. Yeah, um, maybe, maybe. Okay, I, I would say that um, in the, there's an evolution, right? A, a theory, a theory, not a theory of evolution, but there's a theory of evolution in BPM, right? Uh, where uh, industry experts and 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 uh, companies like Gardner, Forrester, they they, they established is uh, something like you have an application, you have workflow, you have BPM, and then you have ACM, and ACM being adaptive case management, right? where yeah, the idea behind the scene was uh, that while you have rigid structured processes, there's a component for uh, the cases that don't necessarily have a predefined answer, where you can uh, kind of uh, interact uh, ad hoc while still tracking what you did and from there establish rigid processes in the future. So if that is the case, with that in mind, I would say that uh, it's not necessarily something different uh, from what we just spoke about. It's just a different flavor. And why do I say that? Because besides ACM, you may end up uh, incorporating in your center of excellence uh, other things. You will have, uh, and I say that because in, in most of the uh, in most of the companies, uh, I currently implement services and technologies. Uh, most of them have by far more than one tool to automate things. So you will see things like workflow, BPM, ACM. Yeah, and also RPA. RPA. I mean, RPA yeah. is the hype. Yeah, and we've done that too, right? Yeah. So you have robotics. So it, what I would suggest is make that part of your center of excellence, but it won't be it won't make it necessarily different. In case of case management, what will be different is that will the you will have to worry uh, not worry but uh, put more focus on where the case went to than in BPM because in uh, BPM it's prescribed. You already know where uh, the case should go and, and who's going to do what. There the focus is more on uh, distribution, like uh, to see if uh, uh, the workload uh, creates bottlenecks, things like that. Or if uh, the, the goal was uh, to answer in two hours, but uh, there's an outlier of somebody uh, answering in one hour, so a good outlier or a negative outlier to catch that. In ACM, uh, in addition to all of that, you have to see, hey, uh, there are cases, but those cases start to be repetitive. Can I take that away from ACM and put that into something more rigid in BPM, or are those cases uh, justified as case management, right? Yeah, so that that is maybe yeah, a different flavor as part of the center of excellence, but I would make it uh, something different. Yeah, it's like something yeah, as part of uh, RPA besides RP BPM workflow and so forth. If that makes sense. Yeah, and sometimes that's good to have uh, both approach in the same uh, in the same process because you can't. Uh, and spade and uh, and uh, everything, so it's mm. good also to let um, let uh, freedom and and make sure everything can happen. And then, as you said, after that, you monitor everything and you can can see what can be uh, taken out of uh, case management and be back in RPA or BPM or remain uh, uh, un unpredictable. Yep. Uh, another question, uh, Miguel is asking if one of the center excellence benefits can be resilience. Okay, maybe, may, maybe. Okay, yes. So, if 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 I think right about the question, yeah, it, it can be. So, because one of the things, um, there, yeah, the CBOC, for example, the CBOC, the yeah, the common body of knowledge of the APPMP, when they describe the center of excellence. One of the things they want to uh, prepare the organization for is uh, changes. So, uh, and I took that concept and kind of compared that with uh, traffic jams. So, for example, if you look at, uh, there's some sort of a ripple effect. For example, if you have a traffic, right, uh, where you don't have, have necessarily uh, an obvious reason why you would have a traffic jam, but still you have a traffic jam, a gridlock. So nothing moves, but there wasn't an, an accident it, uh, a car damage on, on the street, nothing that could explain the traffic jam. So, and if uh, scientists look at those uh, systems, it usually turns out that uh, if somebody uh, breaks too harshly, 
yeah, because of whatever situation, the ripple effect it has behind your car in the line yeah, gets exponentiated and it kind of translates into a traffic jam. And the same happens in uh, corporations uh, when it comes to changes in processes. So if you have like changes in processes that are not rightly managed, it produces that ripple effect. So if you say, hey, we need to change the parameter in the process, the way we calculate, a new form, a new document. If you do that, but if you do that without a center of excellence all the time, then you create uh, that kind of traffic jam because uh, the operation is not uh, prepared for all those changes. So yes, having a center of excellence, uh, the corporation can become more resilient to change. If that was the question, the answer would be yes. If you focus uh, the question on, 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 on change management and how to prepare and, and how to uh, prime yeah, to actually take advantage of changes the corporation to do that and to do that the right way. And, and, and a very technical example would be yeah, if you ask what specifically would be uh, in Bonitasoft there is a, a concept called continuous delivery. It, and it's only a small piece but an important piece. So for example if there's a change and you want to go live with that change in production, you don't have to stop production. You just put the change and seamlessly, without stopping your day-by-day -day activities, the change goes into production and is there for the next one who goes on to the new process. So those are the things where I think resilience can be achieved through the, the right change management as part of the things uh, a center of excellence has to take care of, if that makes sense. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, the last question is from Miguel as well. Typically, BPM focuses on operational excellence, improving what the organization does. Does the center of excellence, um, uh, can the, the center of excellence help the organization to innovate? And in what way? Yeah, definitely. Um, the most, um, the most uh, obvious ways uh, to to innovate or to improve uh, are on the processes, right? Um, and maybe an example: one of our customers, one of our customers uh, right now, looks at uh, their processes and and discovered that uh, we still have too much of a paper trail as part of the process. In our okay, the the goal the goal is right now COVID nineteen uh, setting the scene uh, survival but also to progress, right, uh, to get new customers. In order to do that, the, the company needs to, way, uh, needs to find a way of getting to the customers without the customer ne necessarily going to, uh, in this case, to the bank or to the branch, to the physical branch, and still sell the products. So, and that is a field where process uh, engineering and, and enhancements, inventing new things, can come into place as part of uh, the center of excellence. So specifically what this customer did is identify why do I require the customer to come to the bank and it turned out to be uh, silly, right? So there was a, a reason where the customer had to give their consent in order to be checked in the credit bureau uh, to sign, uh, to sign uh, the contracts in order to be allowed to receive the funds. So basically paper trail. Yeah. And then, yeah, Basically, the uh, the center of excellence, uh, the the process experts in that company looked at the legal framework in the different countries where this process is, and see if there's actually a law prohibiting to substitute yeah, the 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 signature by omni-channel tokens. So one token biometrics on a cell phone, meaning we extend we extend uh, the process to the cell phone. Uh, where you can take the picture, take the, the the fingerprints and whatnot in order to identify through this channel, showing this method, uh, the process participant and make sure that once you put your finger there, uh, then it's uh, a valid signature of we can go to the credit bureaus, we can sign the documents and uh, if you go through the web page, uh, creating a unique hash, a one-time password where you then sign your documents. So we identify a way to substitute the physical signature aligned to the uh, local law per channel as part of this process. And that was a specific innovation, maybe not groundbreaking, but effective, yeah, the center of excellence did. So, short answer, yes. 
long, long uh, answer was what I just mentioned. <laughs> thank you very much, Kai. Okay, thank you very much to you all. I think we are done for today. We are going to conclude this uh, this webinar. Um, we want to thank you for your attention, if, even if we went out of time. I hope you enjoyed it. And I really want to thank you warmly, Kai, for this new webinar because Definitely. it was uh, very interesting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, all. Bye. -bye,